Huntington's disease, the unique thing about it is that it's the prototypical autosomal dominant uh, or purely genetic neurodegenerative disorder. Um, the thing about that means that we know why they have it. They have it because they got the gene. Um, and once they start developing symptoms, they will continue to progress over time. Um, this, was all, this all came about with the Venezuela project um, in the late 80s, where a group of neurolo US neurologists um, led by Nancy Wexler went down to Venezuela. They examined hundreds of patients um, with the disease and without the disease and made a determination based on their exam. Did they have it or did they not? They drew their blood, sent the blood on dry ice to the NIH, and out of that, they were able to sequence the gene. Um, it was one of the first uh, full genes to be sequenced. It was the first trinucleotide repeat disorder uh, to be sequenced out um, and was a landmark in a lot of ways scientifically. Um, a lot of people credit the Human Genome Project for coming kind of directly out of th this work to sequence the Huntington's disease gene. The Huntington's disease gene is on chromosome 4 um, and the repeat is a CAG uh, repeat. We consider roughly 40 repeats as the cutoff um, to be definitively positive. Everybody has a Huntington's gene. The gene is repeated a certain number of times. For most people, it's going to be 10 to 20. Uh, and for Huntington's patients, the number may be 40 or higher. The key things about that is, um, you know, if you carry the gene, then each child that you have has a 50-50 chance of inheriting the gene and they will also develop the disease. So it tends to be that many family members in each generation of the disease can have it. If by chance any member of the family doesn't inherit the gene from their parent who had Huntington's disease, then the chain is broken and you know the Huntington's disease line will kind of end there. The key thing that's a little bit unusual about the uh, clinical manifestation of Huntington's disease is that even though the genetic mutation is there from birth, most patients are completely normal until their 30s or 40s when um, the gene starts to really manifest itself or the symptoms really start to manifest itself. The clinical symptoms of Huntington's disease we describe as the HD triad. Um, there are motor symptoms, cognitive symptoms, and behavioral symptoms. So the motor symptoms, the most common is chorea. Um, they can have other coordination issues, dystonia, other things as well. Um, the cognitive symptoms, they're not, it's not quite like an Alzheimer's type memory loss, but they have cognitive impairment in um, other ways. And then the behavioral symptoms can be as mild as a little bit of depression and anxiety to severe psychosis um, and kind of anything in between. Each patient may have a different flavor within those three categories. Um, all of one and none of the others or a, a little smattering of all three areas, um, but it's going to vary from patient to patient. I think there is this impression because HD is a difficult disease that um, there's not a lot that can be done. Just because we can't cure it yet, I think, doesn't mean that we can't treat it now. Um, we have plenty of symptomatic treatments that work. Uh, you know, a great example I like to use is the depression and anxiety in Huntington's disease is often more amenable to pharmacologic treatment than the depression and anxiety in kind of um, all other people at large because of the genetic basis of the disease. There is a more biochemical structural basis for a patient's depression and anxiety in Huntington's disease, so they often respond better to pharmacologic treatment than maybe your standard patients. So I think to just say, oh, you have Huntington's disease, we can't cure it, so there's nothing that we can do, I think is a, is a, is a mistake. There are plenty of things that we can do now, and certainly we're doing tons of research for even more and better uh, symptomatic treatment options while we're waiting on our curative uh, technologies that are still in the works now. So I think um, that's what I really focus on in my care of HD patients is we don't have a cure yet, but we have plenty of symptomatic treatments that can bring many uh, of your symptoms under control and uh, you know, help you to have a good quality of life while we're waiting on the cure.